Welcome to a new edition of the Shoegazing Podcast with me, Jesper Ingevaldsson of the Shoegazing Blog, a website fully devoted to classic shoes which you find on shoegazing.com. The past five years there has popped up more new brands offering classic Goodyear welted shoes than what was launched in total during the previous five decades, more or less at least. In this saturated market it's a big challenge to stand out and find a solid customer base, especially if you are a small independent brand. One who has succeeded is Sons of Henry, created by Tom Brown from Belgium, with shoes made in a factory in Spain. The brand launched a bit over a year ago, it immediately managed to make an impact and has been growing slowly but steadily since the start. We get an insight into the process of finding a factory and all the challenges in setting up a new brand and he shares a lot of learnings on being a small player producing in a large factory. A very interesting insight into this part of the shoe world. Okay, uh, Tom Brown uh, Mm -hmm. of Sons of Henry, welcome to the Shoegazing Podcast. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah. Really excited. Yeah, happy to have you. You're visiting Sweden for the first time now. With the, we're having the shoe gazing super trunk show tomorrow, where you yeah. exhibit. Yeah, that's true. I I, I got here this morning and uh, I spent a bit of time in in Stockholm, beautiful city, and uh, now I'm really excited uh, for the trunk show tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, it's also my first trunk show, by the way. So yeah, exactly. So yeah, a lot to look forward to. Yeah, I hope it will be a good day. I hope so too. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I know you've uh, had uh, an interest in classic uh, shoes for quite some time, uh, and I think when I got to know you, uh, you were proxying Vosch shoes uh, uh, to people outside of Europe. Uh, was that sort of your first encounter with the shoe world from a sort of business side? Uh, yes, yes, it was. Uh, it must have been around uh, 2012, I think. Um, I visited Budapest on a, on a city trip and uh, I knew about Vaz by uh, reading on the internet and by reading their book, the very famous book yeah. that Mr. Vaz wrote, of course. And um, I was interested to visit their shop in Budapest, so I spent uh, an afternoon there talking with Rejo, Rejo Kuti, the, the sales manager at the time uh, of Vaz Shoes. And so we were talking and all of a sudden he asked me... Uh, if I would be interested in uh, being their online agent, mm-hmm. uh, because uh, at the time in Hungary, uh, selling on the internet was 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 quite difficult, and they had just developed uh, two really new modern shoe lasts, the U last and the F last, and uh, they were very popular outside of Hungary, uh, but they didn't have any way to sell it uh, out uh, uh, to countries such as uh, China, Japan, Singapore, United States. So they asked me if I wanted to be their online agent and uh, since I was still in school, I was studying finance, uh, it ent- it interested me and so I said yes, uh, fine, of course uh, and I asked Rejo how he would see it work and, and he told me they had a lot of shoes uh, in stock, uh, different sizes uh, on their modern lasts that they couldn't sell and uh, he showed them to me and, and he asked me yes, if, if, if you have a way of selling them then, then then uh, please uh, be my guest. So I looked at the shoes, the shoes were beautiful, really well made, the price was perfect, so I said, okay, I'll, I'll give it a try, and, and, and I bought, I think, maybe two, two dozen pair of shoes. I brought them with me to Belgium, and I started selling on uh, on forums, on the internet, on, on eBay, uh, pretty much uh, on every place I could imagine, and, and, and the demand was, was, was huge. Mm. The demand from the United States, was 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 huge also from China uh, and so that was pretty much my first um, my first entry into the world of shoes from a business per, uh, from a business side um, but you did this on the side uh, when you yeah did I did it on the side so I met Reggio I think when I was uh, in my last bachelor year so uh, the, the the last couple of years of my studies I I, I, I was a proxy for Vast uh, I set up a company in Belgium, and as I said, it's, since I studied finance, I had a bit of an affiliation with with the business side of things. So uh, it was also a really good learning school for me. Mm. And um, 
at the beginning, I also decided that the money I earned with selling shoes, I would reinvest in learning about the industry because I was still in school, so I didn't have any obligations. So um, the money that I made could be reinvested uh, to go to uh, fairs such as Ligna Pelle and, uh, and Mikam. I visited uh, different workshops in Europe. I, I, I visited um, leather suppliers from Vaz and, and also different ones uh, that I got to know um, just by, 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 by Googling them and saying that I was the agent for Vaz and, and so that was a bit of a uh, a step inside yeah a door opener is yeah, big, yeah a door opener indeed uh, because Vaz was really well known so it was a bit of a golden ticket for me mm. and uh, so in that way as well uh, I owe a lot to Rajo because he basically told me uh, he told me everything that I wanted to know about uh, how a shoe is made uh, how to recognize good quality leather what are the good suppliers which are not the good suppliers um, yeah pretty much everything yeah so, yeah. yeah. So that was a really good learning school for me. Yeah, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. And I know that you then went on to create the, the G store uh, yeah. where you sold them, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, wash shoes. Um, tell me a bit about uh, that project. Yeah, correct. Uh, so after graduating, um, well, I first spent a couple of months um, traveling, and then and then I got the the idea that I wanted to do something more than shoes uh, because. Like I said, I was selling Vaz shoes, but um, but I wanted to sell some other products as well. And my 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 main goal was always to combine uh, high quality materials with uh, cost effective production. Mm. So what I did was contact uh, different factories in Europe and ask them if I could send them the materials, and they would make the products for me. So uh, yeah, gloves and belts and and, and things like that. And uh, from that idea, uh, Jeeves was born, mm. uh, which was a really interesting time because um, at the time um, I had no idea how how, um, how to set up a, a web store, uh, how to set up a, a marketing campaign, how to set up a, a business plan. Of course, I learned about it in school, but but um, learning and doing uh, are two different things. Mm. And so. I set up Jeeves, uh, which was a lot of fun, um, but I quickly realized that uh, shoes were my main interest. Um, so I closed down Jeeves, I think, after after a year and a half or, or mm. maybe two years. Yeah. When was this? Uh... I think that, that must have been about... Uh, mm, I think I started it in 2016. Yeah. I started Jeeves in 2016. Uh, and I, and I shut it down, I think, in 2018. Yeah. 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 Um, and why did you want to start your own shoe brand? So, to me, it felt like um, a logical next step because um, by that time, I had been working with shoes for a couple of years. I proxied a lot of shoes for different uh, different customers worldwide. And, and I also got to know what I liked in shoes, what I liked in, 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 in terms of leather, in terms of models, in terms of lasts. And so I wanted to create something of my own. And with Vasa shoes, this wasn't possible because they had a really limited uh, quantity of production um, and they were focusing on their own brand. So um, when I asked them to use some of my own leathers or if I could introduce uh, a shoe last of my own, uh, they simply said no because, because like I said, they were focusing on their own brand and they were becoming really big in, in, in Asia. They were getting really big orders from Asia. So most of the production <coughs> was uh, was going to those big customers in Asia and the United States. <coughs> um, so that's why I decided um, to build my own brand, just to have full control over over uh, which types of leathers I would use, the shape of the lasts, uh, the marketing behind it, everything. Mm. And uh, when you had decided that you wanted to create your own brand, sort of, <laughs> where did you start? Yeah, where where did I start? It? That's a good question. Uh, I think that this must have been around uh, 2016. In 2016, I decided I wanted to build my own brand. So that's that's quite some time ago. Um, and back then, I just I just wrote down a couple of things 
that I that I knew for myself that I really wanted to include. So I really wanted to work with 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 certain types of leather. Uh, I really wanted to work with certain uh, suppliers, and I also had a price point in mind that I really wanted um, to reach. Uh, so I had to look for uh, for a manufacturer, um, and then basically um, I didn't I didn't build a roadmap uh, like 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 many people did uh, because. I decided from the beginning that I wanted to take my time. Mm. I didn't want to rush anything. I did. I I want to do it properly. You know. So um, that was also quite important to me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And how did you come up with the name Sons of Henry? Mm. Yeah, that's 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 a bit of a funny story actually. So uh, after launch, launching and closing Jeeves, I had to find a new name. Lot, lots of people told me, "Yeah, why don't you just take Jeeves?" Uh, but I couldn't do that um, because the name Jeeves has a completely different meaning. Yeah. Um, and so I was, I, w- I was actually having dinner at my parents' place, and and I was telling my father like, uh, yeah, I, d- I really don't know a name for the brand. I'm a bit a bit a bit at loss. And um, my my father said to me, but 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 just just wait a couple of seconds. And he went down to the basement and he got a picture of his great great grandfather no wait his great grandfather um and his name was 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 henry or the flemish version of henry um and my father told me that he was a shoemaker in isehem which is a very popular part in 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 the flemish part of belgium uh that's really well known for their shoes of course mm. now not anymore but it, it used to be yeah it used to be like the yeah, northampton of belgium indeed, yeah, yeah yeah something like that yeah um and so i told my father yeah okay so then then the name is decided i mean i'm going to call it sons of henry uh but i don't advertise it as much because i know a couple of brands who advertise things like that to to like 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 some kind of uh, uh, quality uh, uh, hallmark, but 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 mm. I I don't want to do that. I I I, I don't advertise it as much. It's yeah, just, uh, sort of like a synthetic heritage show. Yeah, like indeed, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I really didn't want to do that. I think it's written really small, like at the bottom of of of, of my website. But other than that, uh, I I I don't say it to anyone yet. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Except now, of course, to yeah. a thousand <laughs> listeners. <laughs> but uh, you mentioned a bit, but you, that you had an idea of uh, what style of shoes and price point uh, yeah. already from the beginning. Indeed, yeah, indeed. Because I always like a classic shoe. Uh, like when you look at my collection, the patterns are all really classic. Because, uh, funnily enough, the first question people ask me is always, "Oh, but who who uh, who draws the shoes? Who?" Uh, who uh, makes the patterns and 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 I'm like yeah, but the patterns have been around for for hundreds of years, so the pattern is really classic. But um, for me, the most important thing was the leather. Uh, so when you look, for example, at my at my Chelsea boot, it's a really classic pattern, but it's uh, a whole cut uh, pattern, so that's 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 kind of special. But then I make it, for example, in Juta leather by uh, Tanri Haas. Uh, so so that 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 makes it special to me. Yeah. Inca grain, uh, llama calf, leathers like that were really important to me. So it's also those leathers that dictate the price because the factory I work with in Spain they have a base price for production, and uh, on top of that they calculate the leather. But I supply all of the leathers, so I can I can I can choose what leather I want to work with and, and, and some leather is more expensive than other types of leather and that dictates the price but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with, with, with the price now the shoes sell between 350 and 375 euros and uh, I think if you look at the shoes and if you take them apart and if you look at the quality of the leather that is a really good price so I'm really happy with the boat with the boat to the style of the shoe and uh, and the price as well yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, when you set up uh, you created your own last uh, rather than use something uh, that the factory already had uh, why was that yeah correct so yeah that 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 was actually the the main factor why it took so long uh, because i started in 2016 my first email uh, that that I, that i sent to the factory was in 2016 my first prototype was in uh, september of of that year, I think uh, yeah, I think it was September, um, 
but to me the last is 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 the base of the shoe which which makes sense of course uh, it's the most important thing uh, for a shoe to look good um, a well uh, balanced last is 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 fundamental and i think that every country does it differently uh, when you look at it how the french make a last when uh, if you look at how the italians make a last uh, when you look at uh, eastern europe uh, the spanish the english they all make a slightly different last and and, and my preference was the english style mm. so um, a new spring line for, uh, because they did some uh, some uh, bespoke work for me and and and, and uh, i contacted them in 2017 and, and we started developing a couple of lasts um, and since then they actually make all of my lasts so they, they even made the last that I'm using now uh, for samples with a sneaker factory in Italy and I think it's better because in the long run uh, all my lasts will be the same even if I go to a factory in Eastern Europe to produce some other type of shoe all the lasts are made in, 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 in England with the English type of 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 of, of toe uh, with 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 their slightly shorter uh, shape of last. Mm. And um, you own the last, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. and I own the last. Yeah. yeah, I own about seven different lasts by now. And and like you say, there is some kind of value there uh, because, like, yeah. when I switch factories, I can just take the last. Yeah, it takes longer time, costs a bit more to set up, but it it's, does. Uh, yeah, it can uh, add value in the long yeah. run, so to speak. And then, and then there was one more uh, advantage, I think, um, of contacting Springline. The fact that uh, first of all they speak English and second of all they are in the UK, so I get to visit them uh, now and then, and 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 they speak English, so they understand what I say, and 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 also they are really precise. I mean, they 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 make the lasts for some of the most high-end factories in 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 Northampton, and when you say to the people in Springline, uh, I want to reduce this or this with one millimeter, uh, it will be reduced with one millimeter. When you tell it to a last maker in Spain, uh, well, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean then. So, to me, Springline was a really obvious choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you make the shoes at a relatively large manufacturer of good welted shoes in Almansa in Spain. Um, how did you end up uh, with uh, this <coughs> factory? Um, with this factory, uh, so basically, when I when I try to locate a new factory, uh, the process is always the same. Uh, first of all, I ask around, I ask the friends in the industry um, if they know of any factory that, that could help me. Um, but the shoe industry in, 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 in particular is uh, has a lot of secrets. So um, I asked around, but but nobody wanted to reveal any, any, any factories. Um, so then, so then I just googled. Um, um, a second, a second thing that I do when I try to locate a factory is uh, try to locate a cluster of factories because, uh, surprisingly, like in Europe, you have different clusters uh, of factories that produce one item. Um, you have cities in Europe where they produce nothing but trousers, uh, nothing but socks, nothing but uh, sneakers, and you also have it for shoes. You have it in Northampton, mm -hmm. of course, uh, and you have it in Spain as well, <coughs> in, the, in the city of Almanza. And so I just googled the map of Almanza and, and, and I started pinpointing uh, different factories, different factories that popped up. I visited their websites and I made a list of about six or seven factories that, um, that, 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 that could be the one. And uh, then I just I just took a plane to Almanza and uh, I set up a meeting with all of them, mm -hmm. and I spent a couple of days in Almanza, and um, so the first the first factories that I visited um, were were no luck because um, they were really uh, industrial. They asked for minimum order quantities of a thousand pair. Uh, they didn't want to work with my leather. They didn't want to work with my lasts. Mm. Uh, they they said it would be a headache. Um, and so, after I think about four four visits in Almanza, uh, the fifth one was the one I'm working with now. And <clears throat> the moment I set foot in in in, in that factory, I just knew. That was one. It's I've never seen a factory 
who can produce a thousand pair of shoes as easily as it can produce one. Uh, they they can customize literally everything. They were willing to work with my leather, with my lasts, my patterns. They were willing to work with 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 sole stain that I supply. They were willing to work with with rubber soles that I supply. Uh, it's my boxes, my my shoe bags, everything. So everything is customizable. And uh, from the moment they told me that, and then they told me the price and the minimum order quantity, uh, it was a no-brainer mm. to me. Yeah. So that's basically the way. I found the factory and then of course when you walk into the factory and you see what kind of brands they produce for, uh, that's that's a third a, a third thing that, that I always look for, uh, what brands do they produce for and are those brands in line with what I want to produce because it's 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 no good if you if you if you find a factory but if you have to redevelop everything. Um, they 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 were producing for some high quality brands, so I knew that if I wanted to produce a high quality shoe, it would have been relatively easy. Mm. Uh, so so yeah, so that's the third thing, and then that basically a fourth thing as well is the fact that they were really open and showing the factory. So that's also a really important aspect for me because when I visit the factory, I, I spend ninety nine percent of the time on the factory floor, and I want to see everything. I ask everything, and I want to see everything. I want to open every box. I want to o I want to ask for every supplier, and the moment they don't want to tell it to me or they, or they can't tell it to me, then I know that something isn't right. So uh, in Spain they are really open, um, and every question I have they 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 answer. So yeah, that's 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 perfect. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, but you are a pretty small brand, and. Uh, What's the challenge as a small player working with a factory that also has a bunch of larger brands uh, yeah. they work for? <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm still a small brand. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm the smallest brand in the factory at the moment. Mm. Um, so that's, that's, that's a huge challenge. That, 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 that's actually the biggest challenge. I was a bit lucky uh, because I contacted him uh, in 2016, like I said, and then and at the time they didn't really have a lot of big customers. They didn't. They weren't producing as much as they were now, so um, they were taking everyone. I mean, even me with my small quantities, uh, they were happy to have me. Uh, so at the time, uh, all went smoothly. But now um, I noticed that that they have some really large orders for them, really large. Uh, fashion brands as well and then it's really difficult for me because um, my production is delayed uh, in favor of them because of course when they are running late or when 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 time is 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 is, is, is crucial then they will first finish the shoes for those big brands um, and then and then have a look at my shoes um, so that's really annoying because um, I ha I sometimes had a feeling like when when I'm not there that 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 nothing much happens. So that's why I visit as much as possible. Yeah, you have um, to be there. Yeah, I have to be there, and then and then when I'm there, uh, they're 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 really helpful, and 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 I'm able to really push everything, and 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 a lot gets done. From the moment I'm out of the factory, uh, it's less. It's less. It it's it's it, it's not nothing, but it's just less. Um, so that's a bit of a bit annoying, um, but on the other hand, I do notice that the workers inside the factory uh, they 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 it's difficult to to it's difficult to explain, but they take more pride in uh, manufacturing um, small detailed orders for new brands than 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 uh, big mass production for bigger brands you know mm. uh, they 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 also appreciate uh, the fact that I try to introduce something new now and then uh, they appreciate uh, the high quality of leather that I that I ship to the factory and just about every time when I'm in the factory uh, and they're producing my shoes uh, I I get compliments from the from the from the workers there so th so, th so that's nice as well and then um, a second benefit actually of, of, of being such a small brand is also that once they start your production um, it all gets finished 
at once. So I'm able to visit the factory uh, at a very specific date and see all my shoes yeah. in production at once. Yeah. You know, like uh, from the stitching room to the finishing room, it's all in production at, at one time and I'm able to, to, to still uh, change some details or, 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 or help with the finishing of the shoes. Um, whereas a bigger brand, I think, doesn't doesn't have um, the option to do that. Mm. Yeah. So has the Sons of Henry brand uh, developed the way you wish it should? <clears throat> uh, so yes, and and also no. Yeah. Uh, so I launched um, last year in October. So about it. Um, so that's almost a year ago. And when I launched, well, when I developed the brand, I first developed uh, shoes and, and, and patterns that I thought I should develop. Like, I thought, okay, what what do people buy? A black Oxford, a brown Oxford? Um, and so I developed that, but but uh, when the collection launched, I I, I, I felt right away that... that, 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 that it, in some way, I wasn't happy with it. I mean, mm -hmm. I was happy with with the quality, and I was happy with with the shape and everything. But to me, it was a bit a bit boring. I mean, you could you can buy a black Oxford from just about any any brand in the market. But the collection now, for example, I sell um, a llama calf Oxford or an Inca grain derby, mm -hmm. um, and. I'm I'm convinced that at my price point you you can't find it from any other brand. So uh, I want the brand to be known uh, for its 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 special models. It's it's um, um, for for the use of, of of different leathers. So that's why now in the collection I have uh, zero black shoes, um, and I even think I have zero uh, brown Oxfords. Actually, mm. yeah. So yeah, you tweaked the uh, the. Uh, line up a bit then. Yeah, I tweaked it a lot because um, I launched last year, but I launched a bit too soon because I didn't have many patterns yet. And then, and then I I noticed it right away that 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 my offer was a bit limited. So I started to develop more patterns, and then with 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 those patterns, I also started to experiment with different leathers. And and so I just decided, okay, uh, I'm I'm going to try to build a collection that no one else has. Because my first collection was 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 um, thirteen in a dozen, hmm. like they say, but now my collection is really unique. So now now I'm happy with it. Yeah. And um, has something happened um, during these uh, first years, so to speak, that you uh, <laughs> never could have predicted? Hmm. That's a good question. Uh, that I couldn't predict. Um, yeah. The, the main thing would be the the customer response mm -hmm. and also bloggers like yourself who have been really open to a, to a new brand because there are many new brands launching every day and even if I have been in business for for less than a year with the uh, sons of Henry I have customers for example uh, that own 14 pair of shoes of my brand mm -hmm. and then I think I have 14 pair of shoes that's that's that that's more shoes than than I have in my closet and they have it of Sons of Henry, so yeah, I'm 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 really really happy with the support of of of, of my customers um, because it's also a, a bit of a trust relationship um, because in my business model I work a lot of it with 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 pre-orders mm -hmm. so uh, with a pre-order I oftentimes don't have a picture of the shoe or ha or how it's going to look when it's finished but even with the pre-order business model I get a lot of uh, orders from people from customers who email me and say I, I trust that it will be a, a, a nice looking shoe just because it, they know that I used to work with Vaz and, 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 and now with my, with my own brand as well I, 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 I will never uh, sell a shoe that, 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 that to me doesn't look good hmm. so it's, it's a bit of trust so, so, um, so yeah I really didn't expect the the, the, the um, the comments from uh, from customers. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm I'm really happy with that. And then, and then also, for example, the fact that I was asked for the for the super trunk tomorrow, that's that that's something I I, I, I never could have hoped for actually. But uh, yeah, I'm really really grateful for that. Mm. Cool. Yeah, happy to have you here. So. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but um, like you said, I mean, it's a really fierce 
competition out there uh, nowadays. Like you say, they pop, popped up brand new brands so well to choose more or less every week. It feels sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you experience that uh, the situation today? So it's 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 obvious that that uh, we are um, that the 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 demand has changed. I mean, uh, when I was selling Vas shoes, uh, Vas shoes were, were were super popular, and the the price wasn't an issue. Uh, I I could sell them at twice the price, and I would still sell a lot. So the price wasn't an issue, but. Uh, slowly, uh, price has become an issue, definitely, um, and people are really uh, looking on the internet and looking for a good deal. You know, they 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 don't buy uh, a brand name anymore. I I think well, my customers don't. They really look for uh, for value. So so that's something that I like. But on the other hand. Um, all the new brands popping up, that's 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 becoming a bit of a problem, especially because, um, well, how how should I put it? Uh, some brands just lie about how it's produced and where it's produced. Uh, for example, I worked with Vas, so I know how a handmade shoe is made, and I visited the factories. And when you look at those workers in the Factories from Vaz and, and when you look at their hands, how dirty and 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 and, yeah. and 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 how like they have cuts everywhere. They 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 they, they their hands are are massive. It's 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 really it's the making a shoe by hand takes 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 strength and takes and takes takes patience. And when brands that that obviously uh, make a shoe with a machine. Uh, when they advertise it as made by hand, that's something that 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 I really really hate. Yeah, um, and it really destroys the business. <laughs> yeah, we're re- writing a bit about that as well. The you know devaluation mm. of yeah. Uh, yeah. certain and, terms. Um, and yeah. in my opinion, I mean, Goodyear Welter has such a uh, people uh, associated with high quality and everything. Mm. So you can just say that it's. Uh, Uh, with your work. Yeah, and you can course. use the correct terms and still get the same. Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, because uh, I don't think that, from the that the type people. of construction should have anything to do with the value. I mean, of course, a handmade shoe has uh, several benefits, but like when when you look at at some of the 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 the, the, the most well known and the most high end makers in in England, it's all made by machine. Um, so so no, I don't I I don't think there is any benefit uh, not for anyone in lying about how a shoe is made um, but maybe the small brands uh, that say their their shoes are handmade just 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 don't don't realize uh, what they're doing but um, yeah that's that's a bit of a shame so that's also why uh, tomorrow actually at, at the trunk show I'm going to introduce something new I'm going to introduce uh, some kind of uh, transparency, some kind of uh, supply chain transparency. Mm-hmm. I prepared some um, some um, some cards that I com- that that I'm going to place next to the shoe with uh, the 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 source of my leather, with the source of my uh, the materials of the sole, uh, with the source of the lining, with everything, uh, just to be open and transparent. Because I think that's that's really the key. Because um, I'm never going to pretend that my shoe is as good as, for example, uh, Saint Crispin. That's 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 not something I'm going to do. I mean, I mean, I have a different customer, and uh, the customer is looking for for something different. Um, so, for the same reason, I'm never going to pretend that my shoe is is handmade, and that's why I'm 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 vouching for uh, transparency. Hmm. For anyone out there dreaming about starting their own brand of classic shoes, um, what tips would you give to them? Uh, that's a really good question because um, I think that uh, building something uh, of 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 that building something uh, of your own is 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 the best thing there is. So first of all, I would I, I would tell to everyone. 
uh, just do it just do it uh, but of course like you mentioned the industry is changing and the demand uh, is changing so i would also advise um, to do your homework um, look for a niche um, look for a, a, an opportunity then uh, some more advice would be to start today uh, don't start tomorrow start today start immediately if it's your passion then 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 just just go for it um, be prepared though to uh, spend a lot of time spend a lot of money in the first couple of years to develop your brand um, you should also listen to uh, different people in the industry but you should also also always realize that in the end it's your decision I, I, I uh, when, when I started Son of Henry I spoke to a lot of people in the industry uh, but in the end the decisions were, were, were my uh, decisions um, and then uh, I, I also believe that that, that, if, that that when you want to start your own brand that you should do everything yourself at least once uh, from, from, from product photography to, uh, to Facebook uh, advertising to, uh, to managing the social media uh, you have to do everything once because uh, when you uh, delegate the work from the from the start to to someone else then 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 you don't know what you're doing and then then that's not going to work um, and then and then I'd also say but that's a bit of a cliche but like with any business um, have fun just have a lot of fun uh, I know for myself that I get up in the morning every morning with a with a big big smile on my face because uh, I do what I like to do um, and every day that I, that I sit at my desk working with shoes or uh, I'm in the factories in Spain uh, working with shoes I just I just absolutely love what I do and that's, that's important I think So where are you aiming with uh, Sons of Henry in the future? Mm, to be honest um, I don't know I don't know I mean at the moment I have a lot on, in the pipeline I have developed um, a couple of new lasts, uh, a sneaker last, uh, a loafer last, and then um, an English round last, actually. So definitely I'm going to introduce all, uh, all um, those three in the next couple of, of, of months. Um, and then and then I'm also shifting a bit of production to uh, Italy for the sneakers and also to to Eastern Europe also for the sneakers. So mm. that's that's becoming a bit of um, it's becoming a bit bigger. So um, so that always that that also has a bit more 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 problems with it. And then um, perhaps in the future, I think I think I think I will instead of focus on 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 building more patterns, I think I will focus more on 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 introducing new new leathers and, and new types of construction. I'm going to introduce um, an unlined construction as well for next summer. Um, and I was thinking of introducing uh, a more expensive line and a more affordable line as well. But uh, those things take time. So I think um, that 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 won't be for the next year. Um, and then and then I'm, I'm, I'm also working, like I said, I'm going to introduce tomorrow um, a little bit about uh, supply chain uh, transparency, which I think is important. So yeah, a lot of lot of different things that that are going on at the same time. Um, so yeah, who knows? Maybe if you ask me again in a year, the answer will be completely different. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of things up and running. So yeah, think, yeah. indeed, yeah, all the time. <laughs> All right, uh, Tom Brown of Sons of Henry, thank you very much for being part of the Showcasing Podcast. My pleasure. Well, it was really, really nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you for listening to yet another episode of the Shoegazing Podcast. For much more on classic shoes, visit shoegazing.com. And to those of you who want to support shoegazing and help make it possible for me to continue to produce high-level content, there is now a Patreon page where you can contribute with anything from $3 a month. Both big and small contributions are much appreciated. 
see shoegazing.com for more info on this. Shoegazing podcast will be back with a new episode in a short while, so hear you again soon.